so let's continue our discussion with our the new topic that is diffraction so diffraction from a crystal is the particular case of a scattering experiment so scattering happens when you send a wave um, so scattering So scattering happens when you send a wave or uh, a particle into a material. So this is the material and uh, this wave and particle is either deflected either deflected or they are diffused in a different direction so basically and uh, so <clears throat> basically we have a material So basically we have material and uh, we send a wave or particle we send a wave electromagnetic wave or particles particles can be neutrons or electrons so basically we have a material and we send a wave or particle and this wave or particle is diffused in other direction so it gets diffused in other direction this is our material So if we study how it's scattered in other direction, uh, then we learn more about the material structure. So if the material is a crystal, in that case, we can speak of diffraction because diffraction means we have some order in the scattering object. So diffraction means we have some order we have some order in this scattering in this scattering object so the atoms of a crystals are the subject of scattering in general we have atoms in disordered position example glass then we have a scattering experiment but if we have atoms ordered in a bravel lattice then we have diffraction experiment so in short for uh, the disordered position for uh, for disordered positions example glass we call it scattering experiment we call it scattering experiment and for ordered position we call the diffraction experiment so basically we send an electronic magnetic wave as uh, from this diagram or or particles which can be neutrons or electrons we prefer x rays as an electromagnetic wave and uh, we observe that uh, how they are scattered and uh, looking at the distribution of intensity after the interaction we get the information of the position of the atoms so if the atoms are ordered um, we speak of diffraction so each atom in the crystal so each atom in the crystal behaves like a center of diffusion that is the scattering center the constructive interference 
between all the waves gives the diffraction pattern so basically in some direction we have constructive interference then we observe very high intensity in this in that direction and if we have disordered position then still we can get some information of the position of atoms so same thing happens if we use particles like electrons or neutrons the constructive interference occurs to give diffraction pattern because they are quantum particles so so for each particle we have quantum wave function associated with the particle so it is the constructive interference between the wave function of the particles which give diffraction information now in this case we have the interference between the waves that is in the case of particles we have the interference between the waves emitted by each atoms so wave hits the atom so wave hits the atom then the atom emits secondary waves and this secondary waves gives interference in some direction we should use that electromagnetic wave whose wavelength is equivalent to the distance between the atoms that is in angstrom so axel is used as an electromagnetic wave because its wavelength is similar to the distance between the scattering atoms wavelength associated with the particles is the de broglie wavelength which is similar to the distance between these atoms actually we can study the position of atom in a crystal and get some information about the collision on the basis of doing a diffraction experiment and we can understand the bravel lattice by the diffraction experiment now imagine now <clears throat> now imagine we have an atom we have an atom here this is the um, atom and uh, the electromagnetic wave arrives so this is the so this is the direction of so this is the electromagnetic waves so this is electromagnetic waves its direction in this way so the electric field is perpendicular to the waves so this electric field puts the oscillation of electrons around the atoms that is when the electromagnetic waves arrive at the atom position here so it puts the electrons of that atom in oscillation uh, so this atom oscillates in this fashion so this atom oscillates starts oscillating when the electromagnetic waves arrive at the atomic position so this is like a dipole and uh, we know that an oscillating dipole emits radiation everywhere and the oscillating atom will emit spherical waves so the spherical waves be looking something like this and the interference between the waves generated by each atom gives the diffraction so the question is what is important for uh, the axial diffraction what is important for what is important for uh, the axial diffraction so the answer is the distribution of the distribution of electrons around the atoms
so x rays interact with the electrons that is x rays interact with the electrons so x ray gives information of the bulk of the material x ray gives the information of the bulk of the materials that is of the volume because x-ray penetrate everywhere that is the volume of the material the reason is because x-ray can penetrate everywhere now what what happens now what happens with particle like electrons sorry with particle like electrons um with electrons the interaction is still with electrons because electrons are charges and they interact with the column interaction with the with other electrons and they will be diffused like waves because they are the quantum particles let me write um with electrons the interaction the interaction is still with the electrons because electrons are charges and they interact with the column interaction with the other electrons and they will be diffused like waves because they are the quantum particles so x-rays and electrons are sensitive to the electron distribution in the crystal so x-rays and electrons are sensitive to the electron distribution in the crystals so x-rays can penetrate in the bulk while electrons just stay on the surface so x-rays can penetrate in the bulk while electrons just stay or interact on the surface so since there is a strong electrostatic repulsion with the other electrons the electron particle cannot penetrate so they just see the first few atomic layers so the electrons are the surface sensitive so we can say that uh, electrons are surface sensitive so x-rays can be used to study the crystal in bulk material while electrons can be used to study the order of atoms on surface which can be different than the bulk now coming to the neutrons neutrons can penetrate and uh, gives information of the bulk material but the neutron has no charge and uh, they don't interact with the electrons so they just interact with the nuclei so the neutrons just interact so the neutrons just interact with the nuclei since they are neutral they don't interact with the column electrostatic forces but they interact with the nuclear forces which are the short range forces so today most of the reflection experiment are done with the x-rays today most of the diffraction experiment
are done with lux rays so there are different theoretical approaches to study the diffraction so basically if you want to study the diffraction by x-ray what uh, you should do for a precise calculation of the diffraction so in order to calculate the precise calculation of the diffraction we must solve the equations of the electromagnetic field in a crystal that is the maxwell equations so which is the rigorous way to solve the problem so in order to simplify um, we will not use the maxwell's approach because it is too complex or complicated and uh, but we will be using another approach which is called von lowe semi empirical semi empirical approach so this will further lead to the fundamental law of the diffraction in crystal that is bragg's law but what about particles so particles are the quantum waves so for particles like electrons and neutrons we must solve schrodinger equation so for x rays we are going to solve volnove semi semi empirical approach and uh, in case of particles like electrons and neutrons we will be solving schrodinger equation when particle interacts with the crystal so we will be arriving at the same result mathematically both approaches are same so before uh, starting one law way let's talk about the hypothesis which is to be considered in the diffraction experiment so in the next lecture we'll be talking about some hypothesis regarding this um diffraction experiment so for now thank you